The Sufi Message of Hazrat Inayat Khan Volume 2 The Mysticism of Sound Centennial Edition The Manifestation of Sound on the Physical Plane It is known, or perhaps discovered, by modern science lately that on certain plates one can clearly see the impression of sound made visible. But in reality, on all objects the impression of sound falls clearly, only it is not visible. It remains for a certain time on any object and then disappears. Those who discovered scientifically the different impressions that are made by sound have found the clear forms of leaves and of plants and of other things of nature, which is the proof of the belief that the ancient people held, and which is found in the Vedanta as the well-known phrase Nada Brahma, which means sound, the creator, one. And we read in the Bible that first was the Word, and the Word was God, and in another place that first was sound, word, and then was the light. It only means that the source of creation was sound. In other words, the creative source, in its first step towards manifestation, was audible, and in its next step was visible. It also shows that all we see in this objective world, every form has been constructed by sound. It is the phenomenon of sound. When we go further in this subject, from a mystical point of view, every syllable has a certain effect. As the form of every sound is different, so every syllable creates a certain effect. And therefore, every sound or word spoken before an object has charged that object with a certain magnetism. And this explains to us the method of the healers and of the teachers and the mystics who by the power of sound charged an object with their healing power, with the power of thought. And when that object has given as water or as food, the object brought about the desired result. Besides that, Many masters of occult sciences who have communicated with the unseen beings by the power of sound have done still greater things. By the power of sound they have created beings. In other words, they have given a body by the power of sound to a soul, to a spirit, making it into a certain being which is not yet a physical being but a being of a higher kind. They call such beings Mawakal, and they work through these beings, using them in any direction of life towards a certain purpose. The physical effect of sound also has a great influence upon the human body. The whole mechanism, the muscles, the blood, circulation, the nerves, are all moved by the power of vibration. There can be a resonance for every sound. The body, the human voice, is a living resonator for sound. Although one can produce a sound, a resonance in all substances such as brass and copper, yet there is no greater and no more living resonance of sound than that in the human body. The effect of sound is in each atom of the body, for each atom resounds. On all glands, and on the circulation of the blood, and on pulsation, sound makes its effect. In India, there is a feast every year when they think of the great heroes of the past, and they mourn over their life's tragedy. And certain instruments are played, certain drums, sometimes very badly, sometimes by someone who knows better. And there are some who by hearing these drums instantly come into ecstasy because the sound of the drum goes directly into their whole system 
bringing it to a certain pitch where they feel ecstasy. And when they are in ecstasy, they can jump into the fire without burning and come out without being burned. They can cut themselves with a sword and they are instantly healed. They can eat fire and they do not get burned. One sees this every year at that particular time. They call such a condition Hall. Hall means condition. It is an appropriate term because by hearing the drum, they think of that condition and they come into it. In order to go into that trance, they need not be very educated or very evolved people. Sometimes they are very ordinary people, but the sound can make an effect on them so that they are moved to a higher ecstasy. And we come to the question of why music has an effect upon a person. Why does a person, by nature, like music? It is not because a person is trained in it. It is not because it is a habit, but because a natural effect of sound is that it attracts. It first touches the physical plane. The snake charmers in the East have proven hundreds of thousands of times that by playing their simple instrument called the pungi, they can attract the serpents of that vicinity. On the physical body of the serpent, it makes that effect by which the serpent begins to feel quite different. And by that effect, they are attracted to the sound, even at the sacrifice of their life, because they are attracted by the charmer. It is therefore that the wise have taken sound as their most important science to use it in every condition of life, in healing, in teaching, even in evolving, and in accomplishing all things in life. It is on the foundation of this that the science of zikr was made by Sufis. Yogis made mantra shastra. By zikr I do not mean one particular phrase. By zikr, I mean a science of words. Apart from the meaning a word has, even the syllables of sound can bring about a good result or a disastrous result. Those who know about it can recall hundreds of instances in history where, by the mistake of a poet who did not use proper words in the praise of a king, the kingdom was destroyed. And yet how little one thinks about it one says, Well, I have said it, but I did not mean it. People think that by saying something, they have done nothing as long as they do not mean it. But even saying without meaning has a great effect upon life. This science can be used in education, in business, in industry, in commerce, in politics, in order to bring about desired results. But the best use of the science of sound is made in spiritual evolution. By the power of sound or word, one can evolve spiritually and experience all different stages of spiritual perfection. Question. Modern music, which is most inharmonious, must then be very dangerous. Answer. It is so dangerous that it is bringing about a great commotion. Now I tell you, one day in New York in the Waldorf Astoria, there was a military reception and a jazz band was playing from the beginning of the evening. And after having heard the jazz band for two, three hours, all those who were there became mad. They were simply mad. Till three or four o'clock at night, they were fighting, going on and quarreling going on, and such excitement going on. They were not human beings at all. Not even animals would be so excited. No doubt, in the morning, they must have become ill, all of them. Question. But is higher music also, also inharmonious, discordant? Answer. Yes, but as I say, 
we do not call the music which does not suit the soul the higher music. The higher music is the music that touches the soul. Question. How do you find the right sound for any certain purpose? Answer. I am going to give a few lectures on this subject during this summer school and say more about it. Question. Can you explain a little bit more about the subtle healing of the cuts of the sword in that ecstasy? How does it happen? Answer. Now this point was touched on by a physician in San Francisco, Dr. Abrams. He intuitively thought, although all doctors were against him, that by the help of vibrations, illnesses can be cured. But at the same time, instead of trying to find the power of vibrations in words, he wanted to find the power of vibrations in electricity. The principle is the same. The principle is that he took the rate of vibrations of the body, and by the same rate of vibrations of electricity, he treated the elements of the body. And he began to get some good results. It is a subject which needs at least one century of work to bring about results. I went to the institute to see how far they had developed and saw that they had a person as a medium. And that person, in certain part of his body, feels the vibrations in the drop of blood he carries in hand. The vibrations of that drop of blood go through his body and in a certain part of his body, he feels them. In that way, they found out the rate of vibration of the blood. No doubt, it is a vast subject. Therefore, there is no end to the errors. At the same time, if people could bear with it, something might come in many years which could be of great use in the medical world. By this example, I want to say that if people can cut themselves and be healed at the same time, it only means that they create, by a sound, a condition in the body so that the vibrations of the body are in such a condition that any wound made can be healed immediately. But if the same person was not in this condition, and if at that time there was a cut, it cannot be healed. One must be in that particular condition. The vibration must be working at a particular rate, at a certain rate. There is a school of Sufis in the East called Rifai. The main object they have in their school is to increase the power of spirit over matter. And such experiments as eating fire or jumping into fire are cutting the body are made in order to get control, power and control over matter. And the secret of the whole phenomenon is that by the power of words, they try to tune their body to that pitch of vibrations that no fire, no cut can touch it because the vibrations of the body are equal to the fire. Therefore, the fire has no effect. Question. Are these beings still visible to our eyes when they are in such a condition? Answer. Here in New York, a fakir has come and has given performances in the theater. Question. Are the sound vibrations of the air, or are they still more inner, fine vibrations of ether, for instance? Answer. They are finer vibrations. The vibrations of the air are nothing, because every word has a breath behind it, and breath has a spiritual vibration. The action of the breath acts physically, but at the same time, breath is an electric current. The breath is not only the air, but an electric current. Therefore, it is inner vibration. Question. Is it possible for a soul, for somebody with a grosser vibration, to become finer in vibration? Answer. Certainly. Other things apart, 
Even for those who have done the zikr rightly, in six weeks' time, the vibrations of their body change. Those who do it properly become finer. Bring the grossest person and make that person do the zikr, and in six weeks' time, that person's vibrations are changed. Question. Is it possible in human life to hear the soundless sound? Answer. Yes. It is by the hearing of the soundless sound that the souls have reached the highest point and have discovered that there is a soundless sound. Question. Murshid, what do you mean by soundless sound? Answer. Sound is that which is heard by the ears, and soundless sound is audible without the help of the ears. Question. Is indifference more easy to attain on the jinn plane? Answer. Naturally, everything becomes more easy on the jinn plane than on the physical plane. But at the same time, I think we must not wait till we are in the jinn plane to experience indifference, interest, or anything else on the jinn plane. Question. For those who hear the soundless sound, is it clear sight? Answer. It is not necessary that a person must be born with clear sight or with hearing soundless sound. If a person is born with it, then there is no credit to that person. I think the best thing is to be just like anybody else and at the same time to evolve and experience all that is possible, all that is latent in humankind, giving others the proof we are all the same. At the same time, it is latent in us. Question. By evolving, you get it? Answer. Yes. Question. In the soul whence and whither, you say the mind is a planet. How is this to be understood? Is mind somewhere in space? Answer. If we are in space, then everything is in space. Are we not in space? And in our mind, not ourselves? If we are in space, our mind is in space too. And if I have said that the mind is a planet, this theory will one day become a reality. And it is that reality which is called the hereafter. The day when the mind has shown itself as a planet, that day is the hereafter. Question. Some say the mind is on top of us. Answer. Yes. The mind is within and without for us. It is not so small as to be within us. And it is not so gross as to be not within us. It is within us as well as without us. Question. But is the mind so great as to embrace the universe? Answer. It depends how large our mind is. The body becomes so tall and grows no further. It can become as wide as it can be and it cannot become wider. But the mind can stretch and it can expand. And it can even expand to such an extent that the whole universe can be reflected in it. And it can reach further still. It can seem greater than the whole universe.